Wait, what? So this happened. I'm Rachel Vallesnor, and this is the podcast Hell is Not the End, although it feels like just the beginning sometimes. Is anything really the end, though? This podcast is meant to explore the limitless possibilities of one's own soul. Why do people do bad things? Why are there countless happenings beyond understanding? Why, when we are cautioned not to do something, do we just do it anyway? The definition of curiosity, a strong desire to know or learn something. There you have it. I will curiously explore why. Hell is not the end. So, we're here today with our special guest, Riley Bogert. Hi. She's going <laughs> to... Hi, Riley. Hi. <laughs> She's going to tell us all about herself. Yay. So, in this in this 2020 <laughs> pandemic year... um. Tell us what piques your interest. You and I were speaking about stories and like how graduation was weird and like yeah. college is weird. Tell me everything. So, um, I graduated 2020, in May 2020, and um, we had a golf cart graduation uh, so we can social distance safely. And all that fun stuff. Uh, it was pretty spectacular. It was pretty great, honestly. But that was pretty much the highlight of the rest of the school year. <laughs> um, everything else sucked. Ah. Online classes were really hard. Uh, my sleep schedule is still suffering. <laughs> um, pretty much, like, graduating... I think that's everybody. <laughs> yeah, graduating 2020 was not a good time because no one was ready for it. Um... Well, that's true. You can't really yeah. plan for a pandemic. Oh, God, no. But, like, we were really caught off guard. <laughs> like, it was. it's almost laughable how, like, unprepared my school was. Because I remember on my very last day, which I did not expect to be my last day, everyone was so pissed off in my last period class because, like, sports were canceled, and everyone was so pissed off. And then this one kid who whom I've known forever, he just went, well, I guess I won't see you guys next week. They're probably going to shut us down. And uh, we all laughed, but then, like, an hour later when I was home, my my dad came and he's like, they just shut down all the schools. Oh, I'm so, like, oh, okay. So you, you guys right. made fun of him and, like, it was all funny until it wasn't funny? Well, like, it was sort of, like, a bitter, like, laugh. Like, it was like, yeah, that's a possibility, but let's hope for the best. Um, and then... Uh, fast forward, I went to college for a few months. Um, that was, that was fun. I did like it. We did have to social distance and wear masks and we weren't allowed to do like a few things that normal college students would do. But then, uh, a lot of people came back, were like traveling, like down to, uh, up to Denver and like all of that. And they were coming back with like COVID <laughs> <laughs> uh, even one of my roommates had a scare. She thought she was with one of her friends who tested positive, so she had to get tested. She turned out negative, but, uh... Oh, no, but that's, like, the thing now. Yeah. Everybody has to be tested. You're exposed. Oh, my God, yeah. I may have been near somebody. It's, it's like, this is real. Yeah, and, like, we all, we all had to go home, which, unless you were, like, super special circumstances, like... One of my other roommates. I had, I had three other roommates, just just to clarify. I lived with three other people. Um, she had special circumstances because she's from Texas. Okay. So she So while the rest of us had to, like, basically had a week to get out, uh, she gets to stay until the end of the semester because she lives in Texas. So that's a little bit harder for her. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure. But honestly, right now, in this day and age, like, Texas... In oh, Florida. Yeah. Those are hot spots. <laughs> no, they were. They're not anymore. Oh. They're, like, super protected and they know their stuff. Yeah. Because it's, I think because it's warm. Yeah, probably. Um. Yeah. But. No, tell me why you went to school in the first place. Like, because you had this, what was your idea? So you're going to this school that you can't go to anymore, but didn't you go for writing? Well, Yes. The reason I went to the school is because it is a two-year community college, uh, so one is cheaper, because college tuition is expensive as right. all hell. We're all broke. It's all good. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, 
I wanted to get my first two years out of the way, and then I would get a transfer so I can major in creative writing, which has been my dream since, like, middle school. Yeah, tell me, so what even sparked this interest in creative writing? Well, I think any human being who has been in middle school will say that it sucked. Uh, (laughs) Middle school sucks. And so I found this sort of weird outlet through these, like, online stories called creepy pastas please don't make fun of me for that okay <laughs> um, and i Real really stories are like f- creative fake stories creative fake stories but they're all based on like horror okay that was the fun part oh uh, okay um so like it kind of delved into like really creepy like psychological thriller kind of stories yeah. to like made up monster stories to like just plain out murderers like stuff like that yeah. And it, it it was morbidly fascinating, in a way. Um, I really, really enjoyed them, and I got deeper de- deeper and deeper into it. And Well, you did touch on the subject that you weren't the happiest in middle school. I was so, not. Right, so would you say this kind of got you through? It Yeah, I really did, because I'm like, well... So it got you through, and it also sparked your interest in writing yourself. Yeah, so I pretty much, like, I would... I was notorious for bringing around, like, a notebook with me in class, and I would, when the lesson got too boring... What? A notebook in class? Yeah, a notebook. But it was, like, a free writing notebook. So I would just, like, I would just free write um, all the time and not pay attention to my teachers. They did not care, though. Middle school sucked. Um, (laughs) They did not care. Uh, But... It just really inspired me because I'm like, well, if this person can do it, why can't I do it? Yeah. So I began writing my own, like, really creepy stories. It sounds like a real inspiration, honestly. Yeah, like, I look back on this, like, I read these stories now and I'm like, God, what was I thinking? (laughs) Oh, God, this is horrible. Oh, wait, so are you saying it doesn't, like, hold up over time? Like, if you read it in middle school, you're like, oh, my God, this is so great. And you read it now, you're like, ew. Yeah, yeah. Does it hold up over time? No, it does not hold up over time. I think... <laughs> That's good to know, though. That means you've grown as a writer. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, no, I continued writing uh, pretty much up until now. Like, I'm literally in the middle of writing another story. Not another story. This is going to be a full-length book if I get through it. Um, but it... These stories, like, as stupid as they were, and still are, like, a lot of them aren't. Like, if you go to, like, more modern ones that aren't, like, the really cheesy ones when you first get into it, they're actually really good. Wait a second, so you're saying the creepypasta stories still, like, exist? Oh my god, yeah. So, um, I don't know this person at all, but there is one of the main influences on YouTube is this guy his name is mr creepypasta it's literally his name and he actually reads out how original i know um he actually reads out all these uh all these creepypastas he has a youtube channel he uh has a podcast he's like this what a podcast that's such a dorky thing to do i know it's so dorky what uh I follow him on Spotify, too. Uh, I still listen to I like how you said two. Yeah. Including me, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're... Him and, like, you are the only podcasts I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he... I still listen to these stories. Like, Well, right, not... but I was gonna say, okay, so, but before you get into that, like, delve back in. Like, you said that, um, okay, so you went to college to eventually oh, yeah. create a right... Let's go into, like, that one story that got you, the black-eyed children. Yeah, that was the one where I... They're kind of, like... The black-eyed children themselves aren't that, like, fascinating. Like, they're fascinating, but they're not... Isn't it the premise, though? Yeah, it's the, a premise. Yeah, the premise is interesting. Them, like... The, them themselves are not that very interesting. Um, the thought of it, though, is really fascinating. So that inspired me to write my own short story. Uh, it didn't have to do... Like, the only thing they have in common is that their eyes are weird. Um, and that that's the one story that I can actually look back on. 
from middle school and be like, okay, this isn't horrible. <laughs> um, but it's weird because these stories just, they kind of started it all. Like, I can pinpoint, like, this story was like, I want to try writing something like this, so I did, and then I just never stopped. Okay, so let's, so obviously we've entered your love of creative writing. Yes. <laughs> so now, but you had an interesting point about how the, those kind of stories relate to ghost stories and the ghost stories that you can relate to now. Specifically, the Black Eyed Children relate to a ghost story that you can, and you can relate to having a ghost story because you, you think you've had some experiences, right? Yeah. Like actual ghosts. Like paranormal. Paranormal, yeah. Um... Our house is not that old, but it is, like, weird. Uh, and there have been, like, times where I've thought I've heard st footsteps in the attic. and You guys don't have an attic. Yeah, we do. It's in my room. That was a joke. Because, like, I didn't think you guys could get to it. Okay. okay. Um, we have an attic. Uh, I haven't been up there personally because no. Because um, no. Because no, I'm not. Because no. You sound like Monique. You sound like... When she's like, because no. Yeah, because no, I'm not going, I'm not about to go up there. Okay, that's weird. I know, because it uh, just implies a creepy, right? An yeah. attic in like a hidden room. Just yeah, it's creeps. like, it's like always like the attic or the basement or the cellar that's like creepy. And totally. you don't want to go in there. Um, so I'm not about to do that. But there, I can, it is above my room. Like you can't get into it from my room. You get into it through my sister's room, but you can't hear it. Ah. So I thought I've heard, like, footsteps in the attic. It was probably Corey. Yeah, was... her crawling around in the attic. Yeah, like Joy. she does on a Saturday morning and stuff. Yeah, you know, that's normal. Yeah, but totally. But my sister and I have talked about, like, how creepy our house can get. Like, there have <laughs> been moments where I've been in the kitchen, and I swear there's something right behind me, and I'm... But you guys, like, you yeah. have you have animals. You have cats. Oh, yeah, we have. So we is have it animals. possible the noises that you're hearing are just kitties? I mean, it could be, but usually when these happen at night, we have our cats, like, in, in our rooms. Like, my... Oh, you're, like, looking at them and you're like, wait. Yeah, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it could be animals, but, like, you should talk to my mom about her weird ghost experience because yeah. I haven't had, like, a lot of... Um, like, I haven't ever had, like, a ghostly hand touch me, or I haven't seen one, you know? I haven't had that. You're not supposed to see one. They're ghostly. Hello? Okay, fine. I haven't seen any, like, <laughs> floating orbs or whatever. Uh, yes, I showed you that picture of me at the Stanley. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you see that's my ghostly orb. Case. No, but totally. But this, this is totally a good point, though. Because, I mean, like, I feel like, you know, like, when you're in middle school, you're... These creepy pasta stories are, you know, they're 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 catching your eye and you're yeah. and like it, like it's making you want to be a creative writer. Oh yeah. And twenty twenty was weird, so te pandemically speaking, you have all these creative ideas in you. Oh yeah, like that's how I spent like my quarantine, like my first quarantine. We might be going back into another. So that's don't say fun. first. We're still in it. So. <laughs> um, that's how I spent my quarantine. Like I would. I was just writing constantly because I didn't know... I didn't have anything else to do. I wasn't allowed to go outside. I wasn't working. Uh, I wasn't in school. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I was... I, I spent most of my time writing and sleeping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, no, no, no. I know, but I love how... I love how that, like, all this relates to what you're... What you possibly be, could be writing now, you know? Yeah. Like, because, I mean, like, we're all shut-ins, kind of, I feel like, now. Yeah, we're all shut-ins. We're all indoor cats now. Yes. <laughs> so, we Just have sort to... Sort of existing. And if some of us are writing or, you know, doing podcasts or whatever like that, it kind of all relates to the strange year that we've had. Yeah, like, nothing can top... The, well, I shouldn't say that. But, like, nothing is really surprising with this year right now. You can say aliens invaded, and I really wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> um... But, no, it was good for me in a writing sense, not in a, like, a physical or mental sense. But, uh, in a writing sense, I had... It's so funny, my brain just went back to aliens, because I was like, oh, have you met my friend E.T.? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. I just wrote a lot, and from middle school, I have branched out from the genre of horror. It's still my favorite uh, genre to write. Yeah. Because it's just, it's not easy, but it's, like, 
it's familiar for me. Maybe it's easy. It's easier to you, to your brain or whatever. Yeah. Um. But I have branched out, like, this story I'm writing right now is Urban Fantasy, I think it's called. Um, so, do you, I, I'm sure you don't want to say anything about that, though, because it's, like, too come. <laughs> but do, so, so because we're relating all these stories together about your school and, like, mm-hmm. how you got inspired to write, do you have a ghost story that kind of relates? Do you have, like, a personal experience that kind of relates? Well... There was this one time when my sister's Girl Scout troop went to the Stanley Hotel, right? And, you know, like, everyone knows the reputation with that. And I just piggyback on because, you know, I'm, I'm into that stuff. Like, I really wanted to be there. I really wanted to see it. And there was this moment near the end. We were just exploring the hotel. And I took a picture of myself in the mirror um, the flash was on and all that, so you couldn't see my face, but right above my head was this weird ghostly face. Like, mm-hmm. I, that mirror wasn't dirty at all. It was a very well-kept mirror. But it looked like there was a face right above my fi- my own head. Um, so that's probably the closest I've gotten personally to, like, having a ghost experience. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I was going to say, because I know you've you mentioned that before, but honestly, it's really interesting to me because, like, you know, people think that, like, if you if you like to write about that kind of stuff, like, it's in your head and, like, yeah. you're susceptible to it. I don't believe that at all. I believe you're going to have the experience that you're going to have. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe call me biased, but I think, like... If you if you look for it hard enough or you're thinking about it a lot, like you're gonna you you're gonna see it more. Like if Okay, I'm gonna call you bias. Yeah, probably bias. But it's sort of just like that mindset of like like if you tell yourself in the morning you're gonna have a good day, you're gonna have a good day. Wait like, but didn't yeah. God, you make that sound so negative. I, if I think I'm gonna have a good day, I'm gonna have a good day. But I'm didn't a very Corey, negative person. didn't Corey also mention a story at the Stanley? Yeah, she, she... You didn't? Okay. 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 Yeah, so like, possible multiple orbs. Okay. Yeah. So no big secret there. Okay. Yeah, so there's possible that there was more than one. I only ever focused on the, like, one right above me because that's the one I can't really explain. Oh, no, that's cool. That's cool. I Because of your experience, I didn't know if somebody else wanted to jump on and say their own experience. Yeah. But, okay. Um, yeah, I haven't personally had a lot of, like, ghost experiences. I have had, like... I'm the opposite, where I have one everywhere I go. Yeah, no, <laughs> I just have, like... Yeah, no, I'm not the person to talk to about, like, having paranormal experiences. No, no, it's cool. I think I think what you're saying is important. I, yeah. like, I like to know how, like, things have obviously shaped your writing. Like, yeah. what you like to write, and how you're feeling about stuff... And yeah. the fact that this year is just so bizarre, and that you're kind of an adult now, sort of, kind of, really sort of. Like I just want to. I'd like to know how you feel. Yeah. Well, writing's always been like sort of an outlet, in a yeah. sense, and I think everyone sort of needs a creative outlet right now because we're all stuck at home. What do you think I'm doing? Yeah. No. Why you do you think I a- torture you guys with these episodes? Yeah. You you started a podcast. Like that's right. Because I needed something to say. Yeah. And. Thank God AJ's here to be my little creative genius. Yeah. yeah. And only, like, kind of recently in my, like, last year of high school, I'm like, maybe I should actually try getting published. Because, like, I think that's always been, like, you know, the goal. But, like... Oh, yeah. No, I always assumed I've never, it would be. Yeah. I've never, like... I'm considering it seriously. But, like, recently I have not been able to, like... I haven't... I've, haven't been able to write at a level where I'm actually happy to send it to a publisher to possibly get published. That is what I'm trying to do. And now 2020 is happening. We all have all the time in the world. So maybe that's the time to actually just just sit down and write. (laughs) No, that's, that is very well thought, well said. And I like the way you said that, but like, honestly, if I hadn't known you, known you my whole, no, I can't even speak. If I hadn't known you my whole life, I already know this about you. You write beautifully, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm not going to say anything because it's not ready. 
Yeah. So, but like, I mean, I I feel like it's 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 great. We watch our movies, we read our books, we write our stuff, yeah. and then we just kind of move on. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it's not gonna break us. We're just gonna work it out. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is. I think this might go for almost every single type of artist out there. But like, our work, we will always look at it and find the flaws in it like we will never be perfectly happy with it Mm -hmm. unless we almost destroy ourselves while doing it and that's just that's not just art kid that is people in general that's life which is okay because we're all trying to we're all trying to better ourselves and you know that's okay yeah and theoretically i know that (laughs) no i know i know but I had someone actually say once to me, like, your writing will always, your own writing will always, like, be boring and predictable to you because you know what's going to happen. You're the one writing it. You've read it a hundred times. You've revised it, edited it a hundred times. But to someone who's never read it before, they will be fascinated by it. And you know what? You were always going to be your worst critic. Yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, but thanks for this episode, Riley. Thanks for coming. This is very... This is just like alluding to what we're dealing with these days. Yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to say something extra after the fact. That if you're dealing with something, this pandemic is not easy. If you're dealing with depression, or if you're dealing with something really hard with your family, if you need help, reach out. You know what? It doesn't matter. If you need help reach out. I I can't even explain to you how important you are. You're important to somebody. Don't ever forget that. A very special thanks to my very special guest, Riley Bogart. She is my niece and um, I cannot thank her for like just giving her insight on her whole life for us. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Rachel Vallesnor and this is the podcast, Hell is Not the End. <laughs>